Hello everyone and welcome back to uh, character sculpting um, with uh, me, yours truly, and Jeff. Jeff is in the co-pilot seat. Hey, hey. Uh, we have been making a little bit of progress. I have done some sculpting um, in between last episode and this episode, but never fear because you're not going to miss anything because we have video that's going to uh, time lapse and magically see how all of this was done. Uh, most, of the, most of the sculpting that was done uh, was just adding his scales and f filling out this leg and then you also notice that we've given him um, some toenail implants. I uh, can't see that. But, uh... Okay, well, let me re bring it up a little bit here. There you go. So yeah, and you will see this on the, the video, the time lapse. And so what we're going to do is we're going to run that time lapse right, right now and we're going to continue to chat with you. And so if you have some questions, Jeff's have some questions for me too. Um, as we go along, we'll just talk about that and talk about anything else we want to talk about. Sweet. Uh, so Poison Ivy Pika says uh, it's looking nice. Oh, thank you very much. So we're going to go ahead and start that video now. And it's going to look shockingly similar to what we got right here, but there is actually a new video. Here we go, it's time-lapsed. Uh, so, I guess uh, we'll have you sit kind of diagonally here so you can see us uh, watching and we'll see what's going on from there. Uh, you see that I'm putting on the uh, putting in the toes. Well, what I did was I created these toes out of Avis Epoxy Sculpt. Mm -hmm. And that made, you know, let them cure overnight so they're nice and hard and won't uh, get any tool marks on them. So I made a uh, cavity for them in the toes and uh, drove the toenails in or the claws in. And I'll do the same thing for the hands when we get to the hands. But we're making some uh, major progress. Yeah, it looks like it. So yeah, those are pretty wicked looking claws. Nice. Uh, then a lot of it was just going back over it and uh, I had to restart that, uh, yeah, see, is it the left side of his face several times before I was satisfied with it. Uh, easier for you to see that. And uh, then there was a bunch of questions about how his back of his skull should look. And uh, I had to, you know, I, th th this was a lot of thinking going on during this uh, sculpting process. Let's see, Poison Ivy says, uh, you do amazing work. It's looking very nice. Thank you. Yeah, I agree. I've been contemplating how I'm going to uh, cast this guy. Uh, <laughs> and cutting him is going to be, you know, cutting him up so that I can actually make a mold. That's going to be challenging because there's several things on him that, that, that you know, this thin armor uh, points, I'm going to have to fill it in just a little bit to make sure it's strong enough to go ahead and get a, a good cast from it. Uh, what do you mean by that, the thin spaces? Are you talking about the gaps between his body and the armor, or are you talking about something else? Yeah, the gaps between his body and his armor, I'll have to fill those in, and uh, there's that... Um, uh, I guess it would be called um, like a spur or whatever, you know, coming off of his heel um, that will have to have some extra strength to it. Mm, okay. Um, I, I'm not sure where the cut is going to be at yet, so I may try to do just his bottom legs separately mm -hmm. and then his torso. Imagine the hammer is going to be a problem, right? That will be done completely separate. Yeah, because it's going to be creating a, a lot of crosses there, a lot of negative space. Just from my experience ripping things out of those molds, uh, it's already hard enough when they don't have any of those. Oh yeah, yeah, you, you maybe can't because, I mean, uh, that uh, the maul forms a triangle with, uh, with the arm. Mm -hmm and that would make a, the mold lock you know you'd have to you have to do something there uh, there's a lot of uh, detail coming up on his shoulders and that type of thing it's going to be interesting yeah it looks like uh poison ivy pika is going around sharing our our link out we've got it out on our discord uh you got it on your facebook and on uh twitter so 
we'll see who shows up. We're going to be doing some kind of uh, goal. Uh, we, we've been kicking around a few ideas, but we haven't got anything solid yet. Hey, um, Plague State. That's, uh, I assume, Dustin there today. Uh, yeah, it is in warp speed, isn't it? <laughs> it says working fast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If only I could do it this fast in real life. <laughs> Yeah, so he's uh, he's done some stuff off camera, so we wanted to show it, and this is the the time lapse of that. So we're watching it with you right now. So if you got questions, let us know. It's pretty cool though. I have to say, uh, you know, the the detail work and putting all these little bumps and everything on there is it looks really good. It's just uh. I'm glad it's time lapsed because <laughs> that must have taken you forever. Uh, yeah, that's about three full days of sculpting actually. Uh, when once we get to where we're at right now. Nice. Uh, so I figured, you know, you're still gonna see it, it's, and I'm still here live talking about it with you. It's probably more entertaining to watch this than it would be for me to go pitch, put the little scale down pinch put a little scale down <laughs> <laughs> yeah i guess that is true oh uh dustin's on his lunch break right on hey dustin you know it's a three-day weekend for some but clearly not when you're in the health profession <laughs> man stay st safe dustin make sure you know, you're very careful there in the lab. Oh, yeah, and it's his son's birthday party today. Oh, oh very cool. He's going to be getting close to driving age now. That's getting pretty crazy. What? <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> pretty close. Oh, my God. Man, how can that be? <laughs> uh, I don't know. Those things, they, they happen. Time just keeps going. <laughs> yeah. That's for sure. Does your son like to play D and D at all, Dustin? <laughs> I like that the captioning said uh, "Destin" instead of "Dustin." Ah, uh, that was dealing with my Indiana accent again. <laughs> he says, uh, "One year from an official designated driver." Yeah. Wow. Yep. These are the days. Having that wild stuff to deal with. Taking people out on the country roads and hoping they uh, <laughs> don't freak themselves out. And we saw the uh, young one the other night on, on what was it? It was on uh, Wisdom Check, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we were uh, invaded. We got raided midstream by uh, a number of things. We had a little child. We had my mom. We had a cat. <laughs> Every single screen had something randomly popping up in, uh, in the background. So that was interesting. Hmm. What was your mom doing with, in the middle of the screen? <laughs> well, uh, I, was, I was in the middle of the interview, and I hear the door slowly opening and tapping on the door. Oh, yeah, that's good. <laughs> I'm like, okay. I, I kind of glanced back in the middle of a sentence, and I'm like, yeah, got it. You know, filming, you know. And then, still standing there, I'm like, something's waving in my peripheral vision. <laughs> I'm like, what is that? And then, I glance back, and there's a piece of paper. <laughs> Just doing that, I'm like, all right, all right, snatch it, <laughs> push the door shut, and it just says, your mic is quiet, and I'm like, uh, okay, um, ask everyone else, everyone else says, no, it's not quiet, and then, uh, it's like, all right, thanks. <laughs> I, think our, I think the mic right now is pretty good. Yeah, yeah. It, it looks like it is, it's... It's getting right up where it needs to be in that red. For me, it's a little low, but I'm standing. Yeah, but you're back there, and I'm far. right next to the to the mic, and so um, I don't know if can you see it in the in the. Yeah, I can see it here. 
Like for me, I get up to the yellow, you get up to the red. So that's that's pretty good. All right. Um, yeah. So what, what do we got going on here right now in the actual video, though? Oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, what, just well, what, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to. I'm doing the underneath the chin is what I'm doing, but that was very hard to reach and very hard to get to, and so I had to tilt him up and uh, lay him on his back almost to, to get to that. Uh, it was very challenging. That was tight. I'm not 100% satisfied with what happened there, but uh, it, it, it's coming along. And then I noticed, uh, you know, that in um, the drawing that Levi did, uh, there's a ring of, of scales that are prominent around his neck like they like raised like a, a, a string of pearls maybe or something you know but they're actually uh, scales so I, I thought yeah. that was part of the armor no I think that's it's like a clasp on the front is it well I didn't make it that way well. <laughs> too late now um, let's see poison ivy pika Jeff I know you you do voice acting, but I just got to ask, did you ever do talk for radios? Because I keep telling my boyfriend you had a radio man voice. Uh, well, <laughs> no. Um, I don't do voice acting either. I, I just play role-playing games. Uh, I happen to make voices on there, but uh, no. No, I, I haven't. Uh, I, I remember in a, it was a high school, I guess, when I was working at the shop, like some of the uh, radio DJ guys would come in getting their printing done and that they mentioned a couple times that I had a voice for radio uh, though they were for country music radio and that's that's not my thing <laughs> so I don't know if I could get through a day of day and day out of listening to country radio yeah I'm not sure where you inherited that from Jeff because my uh, stuttering and uh, clumsy speech and southern Indiana accent and <laughs> I you sound way different than I do. When I listen to these things, I think, oh, I cringe because of my voice. <laughs> well, it, it, we've talked about this before, but anyone who's on camera, once they re listen to their voice played back, always thinks it sounds weird. Like, it took me forever, and still it sounds weird to me. You know, yeah. I, I listen to it now, and I'm like, man, my voice sounds really high and really nasally. Because that's just not the way we hear our own voices every day. Hey, no problem. I, I don't mind uh, answering questions. Of course, that's why we're here. Uh, yeah, I mean, I've <laughs> in retrospect, it may have been a cool job to have working the radio, but uh, no, I never did that. I, I think Jeb does a remarkable job on Wisdom Check, along with Dustin. They do a great job interviewing people. They have some pretty pointed questions when, when it comes to understanding their um, guest and I always uh, am quite amazed. Well, thank you for that. Appreciate it. Glad you enjoy. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a lot of rambling and hoping it lands on a question. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes we get some good ones in there. We had a good one this last week. It was, it was fun. Let's see. We are at... We're still just putting scales on this guy. Uh, I'm finishing up the face here. And the back of the horns, and um, getting ready to do the back of the of the skull. I kind of augmented a little bit. Uh, I kind of made the horns continue around like a mohawk. I hope that's okay. I didn't check with Levi at first, so I don't know. I kind of interpreted that whole thing. Is that a word? Interpreted? <laughs> Interpreted? <laughs> Interpreted. Yeah. Well, we just make things up around here. That's that's how it goes. Man, the, the eyes are just like piercing. It's crazy. Like when you rotate yeah. it around, like it really pops. Yeah, I, I'm glad. I, cool. I'm glad that we had those. I uh, had to reposition that. I, I think that was what was disturbing me. I had to reposition that left eye oh man at least 50 times <laughs> it was really crazy hmm. uh so pico wants to know uh, how the owl is coming along 
Oh, the owl's coming along pretty good. I'm going to do some little off-camera um, uh, action. Well, on-camera, off-camera action with that guy, too. And uh, so Thursday night, when we come back, we'll do a little bit of a catch-up with this time-lapse thing. Show him to the camera there. And let's see if we can get him in here a little closer. Uh, bring it down. All right. There we go. Now, he's coming along pretty good. I kind of wish that I had oriented his head just a little bit further back and tilt with his body, but we're, we'll get with that. Um, so we'll see what happens. I kind of th like that there's a, an articulation there, because I was about to say I like that the shape doesn't feel like rigid straight. It looks like it's got an actual animal in there. I think he's going to look great once we get some feathers on him and then I get to do the Celtic stuff that I want to do. Um, I want to come out here a little bit more with feathers in the front. So we'll see how that turns out. Yeah, she says uh, it looks really nice. When I finish up these guys, I'm going to do a Kickstarter project. Uh, and the Kickstarter project is going to be a large uh, box, a large chest uh, with a octopus on top. Oh, um, cool. So it'll be, and then there will be some Cthulhu um, symbols on the side of the box and some other things I want to try to do. That's going to be really fun, but I'm going to run that on Kickstarter and see what happens. But I'm still going to film it and it'll be a part of probably, probably the Thursday night Facebook uh, broadcast. Cool. Uh, Z Bomb Gaming wants to know if you've ever done wood carving for sculpting. I have done very limited wood carving, and let me tell you, it's a way different. And I admire <laughs> the wood carvers. I uh, the wood carvers is a subtractive process, whereas I'm both additive and subtractive. What do I mean by that? I mean that when you're doing clay, you start with wire and you add stuff to it and then as you as you build on that um, you can say well oh wait I added too much here so I can keep take that off but in wood carving there is no take taking it back once you scrape it's gone yeah. um, I have seen some beautiful things and I, I came across a wood carver uh, today on uh, twitch that I I liked what he was doing, and I'd like to see more of what he has to offer. So, we'll... Do you remember what they're called? I think... Oh, rats. Oh, I need my <laughs> computer in front of me. Uh, it was... Uh, I want to say... Samuel Sculpture? Sculpture Samuel? Hmm. Cool. Um Something like that. It no, was a we'll channel. Look it up at another time. Let's see if yeah. we can get it going. I have some friends uh, who are really great at sculpting. Uh, have uh, a friend out uh, in Oklahoma, I believe, maybe somewhere out there. Um, his name is Jim Humble, and I, I want, what I want to do is I want to try to have a little show uh, where we bring on some of these guys and. You get to see their work and get to <clears throat> chat with them. So we'll be working on that in the future as well. So Jim, he's one of my favorites. Tom Taggart is another one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. um, the Shiflet Brothers, okay, I, I bow down and worship. Um, what do they do? Oh, they do uh, barbarians and uh, they do some dragons, and their sculpture style is so unique. Oh, and they do, they love Wolverine, too. They love to sculpt Wolverine. Hmm. Um, had a friend who just recently asked me, because uh, I was mentioning door knockers, and there's the door knockers from the Labyrinth, uh, where they have the talking door knockers. I don't know if you remember that or not, but um, I had said, well, no, I don't think I can do that because it's copyrighted material. And then turned to ride around and saw somebody else do it. So I don't <laughs> know. Yeah, that's funny. Yeah. Uh, Poison Ivy wants to say, uh, let's see, 
she was just telling her boyfriend that you'd want to do a Star Trek D&D. You love Star Trek. Yeah, that kind of appeals to me. Uh, I have D&D. I have a friend who has always de- uh, he GM'd. Well, let's get my terminology straight. GM'd for me. And he wants to do uh, Star Trek. So we might do that on my channel. I hope I can maybe talk him into doing it. <laughs> Now, now, when you say uh, Star Trek D and D, are you talking about using Dungeons and Dragons to be Star Trek, or are you talking about a system designed to be Star Trek from the ground up? Oh, it's designed to be Star Trek from the ground up. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like I haven't played it. Be, mm-hmm. I, I, it would need ahead. to be different. Is the thing you know, like the systems would have to be different. The, uh, you know, just the feel of it. I don't think the Dungeons and Dragons model would quite capture it. So, yeah. Need a system that plays it out well. Yeah. Also, got to really figure out what you want to achieve when you're playing that kind of game. You know, what is it that you're doing as as you know characters? It's like the the structure of it's obviously made to be like a TV show, right? So, do you have like a small crew, but they're all like the command officers? Right, and there is a command structure where there isn't so much so in a D and D and D game. Which that, that becomes pretty complicated. Or, you know, things like, oh, I'm piloting the ship. Cool, what's everyone else doing? Yeah. <laughs> Standing there? Well, yeah. <laughs> Shaking and falling down whenever stuff happens? But usually, <laughs> uh, usually a good GM has a story, a backstory about a away mission with a small yeah. crew. And so you get away from the ship. And, you know, even in the Star Trek universe, in Star Trek shows, uh, there was always something that disabled the magic, you know, like uh, no more transporters or no more warp drive or, <laughs> you know, yeah, it's, you need it's broke. <laughs> you have to have something that disables it because otherwise it just answers the problem. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, technically, once you have once you have transporters, everything, yeah. everything in life is solved. Everything. So you have to find uh, ways to, you know, disable the transporter, whether it's shields or um, something hit the ship and broke the transporters. That seems like a very common thing. Yeah. Or uh, really a lot of uh, ion storm activity over a planet. Um, yeah, there's a few things that seem to be consistent with uh, Star Trek. You always had. Uh, you know, Wesley solves it. Oh, yeah. Uh, you've got uh, neutrinos. Oh, yeah. You know, you just, oh, the dish, we just, we modified it to, you know, emit a neutrino, blah, 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 okay. Cool. That solves everything every time. All right. It's like the blazing sword from Voltron. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, she says her boyfriend plays D&D himself, so he is big on D&D art. Oh, cool. Yeah, it's, uh, we got plenty of that coming around. Lots of little dragons, and uh, I'm trying to see what's around me. You know, lots and lots of stuff around here that fits that mold. Uh, does he have a particular artist that he likes for Dungeons and Dragons, or just the general genre? Well, I'll let you have some time to answer that. Yeah, there's all kinds of. Uh, I mean, we there's Larry Almore. He's the one of the originals. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's Jeff Easley, still around, still kicking and still putting out really great art. And uh, as are my friend uh, Brent Chumley, he he does D and D art. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's uh, oh, I don't know Charles Arbach who does D and D art. Um, my good friend Ed Ed Beard Jr. Uh, does D and D art. There's lots of them out there. Yeah, it's cool stuff. You get to go see every time we you know, go out and about. Of it, course, it's crazy when you see you know some really iconic artwork pieces, and then you know they you see the the piece in person, or you see the artist in person. You're like, man, I've seen this thousands of times, and now I know who did it. I always was very fond of uh, Keith Parkinson. No longer with us, of course, but his art is and will always be. Um, there's a lot of great names out there. Mm-hmm. 
you know, it's interesting the styles too, because there was a big, you know, in the early days, I guess, there was a lot of uh, heavy metal magazine influence, you know, that uh, Conan style kind of uh, sword and sorcery feel. Mm -hmm. And then it's kind of morphed over time to more of a like anime inspired almost, or uh, you know, like comic y cartoon kind of influences. You know, it's it's interesting to see how like the, the tone and the style of the game has shifted. I mean, it still have some of that old style art, but it's less and less of that. Get less of those like oiled up brawny men, you know, and hmm. you know, s scantily clad women, and you know, all that kind of stuff. Not kind of like the old days. <laughs> <laughs> Not sure. <laughs> <laughs> mm. It's like you've uh, we have successfully armored up one butt cheek of uh, Kodo so far. <laughs> yeah. Is the other one finished it? No, no, we're going to do that today. That other leg's getting done, all right? Yeah. Out. I figured the uh, armor part goes a little faster, and so we'll be doing that right after this, this time lapse video. We're coming up on the end of this, I think. Right on. Um, I, you noticed I did, I fleshed out the left arm and now I'm covering it with scales too. Oh, Poison Ivy, thank you. Uh, she says her boyfriend is going to give uh, Tabletop to Keyboard and DL Pancake a shout out on his channel. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, it's always nice getting the word out. Finding more people to come and enjoy what we're doing. Hopefully we got some stuff people will enjoy. <laughs> Very cool. Yeah, I think my next goal will probably be a follow uh, goal, or maybe a 250. But I'm not sure what I'm going to do for that. Uh, well, we will do another, uh, some type of a giveaway. Mm -hmm. As soon as uh, Jeff and I get a chance to iron out. So we're getting a, a few people popping in. That's nice. So, yeah, this time lapse made that look pretty funny, didn't it? <laughs> yeah. Kind of inverted upside yeah, down. Yeah, and really <laughs> flipped. And for those of you just coming into the channel, um, I did some sculpting off of the live feed uh, this past week and filmed it and then did a time lapse of that whole entire sculpt so this is about three days worth of of sculpting and adding the scales and that type of thing and then I'm right after this feed here um, ends after this time lapse ends uh, we'll begin some live sculpting of, of Kodo and finish up on his right leg today hopefully finish up tell you what looking at it now his feet and like lower legs just look powerful like something switched on them from uh, the days before to now. It may just be the ad addition of the claws. Well, it's the addition of the claws and it's the extra material. Um, the, the armor going on, uh, fleshing out the, the leg to make sure that all the muscle structure was right, mm -hmm. and then the, the scales and then the armor. Uh, so that's what makes it kind of flesh out a little bit more. Yeah, it looks heavy duty now. Yeah, thank you, Jeff. Yeah. Now today we'll, you know, I mean, we'll finish up with the right leg probably, and then the next thing is going to be um, uh, flushing out his uh, chest and and stomach area so that we can put some armor on, because we're going to have to have some clay behind that armor um, to make sure that it casts right. So we'll see how that goes. Yeah, we were talking on uh, DM to Art, where uh, Levi was doing the drawings. Um, he's he keeps going back and looking at the ones he did originally. Now that he's done some other ones, and he's like, "Oh yeah, <laughs> you know how this goes, right?" So he's like talking about how like some of the pieces look really uh, three dimensional and rounded, and he's saying that in particular Kodo, the one he started with, the first one looks flat to him, uh, and he thinks it's because of the the uh, texture on the metal. Like, I think it's these lines here, like kind of the, the brushing going across. 
Yeah, there is a little bit of that. Uh, on the particularly on the, the the stomach piece there, to me, the uh, the lines don't seem to follow the angle, and I think it's creating it, making it look flat. But like most of it doesn't uh, look flat to me. It's just that one spot I think does it. Yeah, right in here. Yeah, and so I yeah. think if you just that just subtle little difference there, I think would make them look way more three dimensional. And if you look on, um, yeah, they can see here on the, the picture up above there. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's interesting because you see some of the other ones like he did uh, Fulcrum, who is a uh, a warlock tiefling character, and. On him, he looks really three-dimensional, like the way he did the shadowing and the lighting on it. Uh, it's really deep, mm. rounded. He, he, like he looks like he's inside of his cloak, you know, and all that stuff. And uh, so it's just interesting to see like the differences and how they kind of play out. Uh, Z Bomb Gaming says I have um, played Pathfinder in 5e, mostly 5e, uh, but I don't have a particular artist I like. But I always appreciate good art, whether uh, it be painting, sculpting, drawing, etc. Especially of the fantasy variety like D&D or Lord of the Rings. Yeah, it's, it's a cool genre. It's a good style. A lot of room for creativity in there. Yeah, I think, that, I think that's why I like it so much, is that there is lots of room for creativity and the imagination. And... Alright, I think the video must have just ended there. Yep, I think uh, it did. We got this abrupt uh, swing to reality. <laughs> uh, All right. So let me go ahead and take that off there. And, uh, yeah, cool. So we're now, what do you guys think of the uh, the time lapse? Is that uh, a good format for you? This is live now. Yep. Well, time for you to man your position. Yeah. <laughs> Get into so. Got to do some work, old timer. <laughs> <laughs> I might, yeah, I'm pretty close in there. Yeah, you might back up just a touch. I think you're in the, uh, the lighting a little bit heavy there, but uh, yeah. Oh, me? Yeah, you, you as an individual, yeah. Yeah, that's better. You were just in a spot where it was just shining on the sides of your heads really, ah. really hard there. Uh, All right, so we're going to put the rest of the armor on the right leg. That's what we're going to do today. Nice. And I've cut out patterns for all of this so that I can follow pretty much what I did on the other side. Just getting myself a big clump of clay out of here. Hmm. See, Poison Ivy says, uh, Koda looks so amazing. Can't wait to see Skeezer, who's uh, my character. A little gnome with porcupine hair and uh, big, huge, goofy looking eyes. Is that the one I'm doing next? I don't know if it's one you're doing next, but uh, it's my character. <laughs> well, I've been thinking about him for quite some time. I I'm think that maybe I'll do him in Avis Epoxy Sculpt because there is less uh, less of the kind of, of armor work and all that stuff that I need to do so that I can just use my fingers and, and my wits. So, uh, what's the difference between the, the clays? Because, like, not what, what, which one are you using right now? It's the. Uh, this is monster clay. Monster clay. Monster clay does not cure. Mm -hmm. It never becomes. I mean, it, it it it's solid, but I can always melt it and come back and change it. Mm -hmm. uh, Avis epoxy clay is what I made the little claws out of the little uh, toenails, mm -hmm. and that stuff I can't. Yeah, I mean, you can see my fingernail going into it there, and it's—I it, just can't even begin to scratch it. So you get it right, and then you hope it's done. <laughs> yeah, you get it right, and you hope it's done, and it—it it cures. It starts to cure the moment you mix it, and it continues to cure completely uh, solid overnight. So you can do a little bit, and then come back the next day and add a little bit more. Oops. You got to throw it on the floor. Pick up some. Uh... Wow, where did that go? <laughs> You want me to look for you? I got it. Yep, there you go. <laughs> oh, great. Now it's nice and dirty. Got particles all in it. Hmm. Brilliant. Added texture. Added texture. <laughs> yeah, well, it's okay. So we're going to send it through the spaghetti factory. The pasta maker. 
so he doesn't want to go through there. No, he doesn't want to go through. There we go. All right. Let that cool a little bit. So is it actually heated up when you send it through there? No, it was already. I mean, I had the the, the clay heated uh, from the microwave, so it's pretty malleable at this point. Oh, good. We got some stuff that we didn't have any air bubbles. We just got a few particles from the floor. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> Uh, it's always something. All right, so am I still? I'm not in the focus of what I'm doing here. Let me turn this guy around. There we go. And I've just laid the clay down on. Yeah, I've laid the clay down on some aluminum foil, and then I have my little patterns. And the very first thing we're going to do is do these um, uh, anklets or this armor here. And I just cut that pattern out of my with my paper right on top of it. If I can get my little clay cutter. It's very thin, very sharp piece of metal. Mm -hmm. So the, the tin foil there, does it not stick to that? It doesn't stick. Well, it, it kind of sticks, but not not drastically so, no. Hmm. This is uh, the kind of thing that you can do with this clay that you can't do so easily, anyway, uh, with uh, the Avis Epoxy Sculpt. But the thing about the Avis Epoxy Sculpt is that once I have, the, I mean, if I'd done Koto out of this, I could have said, Ta-da! We have the original, and I can paint him, you know? Yeah. But, um, what we're going to do is we're going to end up casting him, which is a little bit different process. I mean, it's a longer thing, and I'll end up chopping him up to get that done. Hopefully. And I'm just continuing to cut my pieces here. One, two, three, four is what I need. <laughs> yeah, Plague State Dustin is saying uh, if you when you do skeezer, it's gonna be tough because he's so small. If you stick to scale. Well, I'll probably fudge a little bit, uh, but um, I mean, I can't do, I mean, as small as, as he actually is. Well, we'll see. I don't know. What really has me stumped is doing those quills in the, such a way that I can get them, um, get them cast. Yeah, that will be a challenge. So you're going to be delicate. Yeah, I don't know how you're going to do that. I don't know either. So we'll find out. <laughs> um, so the challenge there being that they're long, thin, spindly uh, pieces, right? Yeah. Now I get to do my blacksmith Im impersonation, and I am just putting the metal uh, hammered texture onto the, the pieces. So, uh, looks like Z-Bomb Gaming is making a PC for uh, Poison Ivy Pika so she can stream. Uh, what would you want to be streaming? Oh, she was talking about that the other night. Um, they're thinking about doing some games online. Hmm, cool. This is a lot of fun, but I will say it's a lot of work too. 
<laughs> what streaming? Uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, uh, it's made it's made computers exciting to me again. Yeah. yeah. Um, I kind of lost interest in computing, which is a big deal for me because I've been in computing since, well, since well before me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So that's uh, that's a long time. I started with Photoshop 1. 1. 1.9, I believe. Woo. Yeah, I, I, it was back in the day when nobody knew what anybody was doing, including the people who who did the who did the the application. <laughs> Uh, Poison Ivy says that she'll most likely be doing D&D. &D. Very cool. Yeah. Yeah, this is where it gets tricky. guess I'm not the only person who has the like weirdest sleep schedule now it's some something about this whole quarantine life is uh, completely flipped my 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 sleep schedule you know so I'm up until like six or seven in the morning and waking up around noon it makes no sense well I mean, you do a lot of streaming, too, and that has something to do with it. <laughs> Poison Ivy says that she told her boyfriend about you inventing the internet and working on a book. <laughs> uh, I, you know, back in the day, uh, we were one of the very first to, to uh, create a uh, ISP that was in... 90. Well, the internet was coming on strong about 95, 96, 96. And 97, we had uh, an ISP service. Is for 97? Small. I thought it was earlier than that. Uh, I don't think so. Hmm. I may be confused myself, but. Well, no. Some You're right. That... You're right, because we had it before my dad died. For some reason I keep thinking it was around 93, 94. I don't think it was 94. It must have been like 95. Hmm. Way back machine. Yeah. So we have the owl in the shot there. I'm looking at it. Is that cracked or is that just uh, something dark on his wing? Uh, that is the um, understructure of aluminum foil and black duct tape. Oh. And I just don't have it very thick there because it's not doesn't need to be very thick uh, covering because uh, I'm going to put the feathers over the top of that. Gotcha. So it's a little bit of his internal organs showing through. <laughs> Yeah, probably not ideal. No, not ideal. So, uh, did everybody enjoy the the time lapse? Was that worth doing? Uh, hey, we have a new follow from Inks the Kit soon. Thank you very much for that. Thank you. Yeah, we're. Uh, He's working right now on a character piece here. Uh, so the character model you see above his head there is a character called Kodo. And Kodo is a dragonborn paladin from uh, my group's Dungeons and Dragons game. And so he's giving him some life here with a sculpt. So if you have any questions, uh, please uh, feel free to let us know. Uh, we're happy to have some conversation back and forth. He's been an artist for a really long time. Uh, he's does the circuit, you know, going to conventions and stuff when those are running, and he's, uh, 
He's made a name for himself off of doing these sculptures. Primarily a lot of dragons. So if you're interested in dragons, it's the guy for you. Yeah, this character comes from uh, Jeff's uh, channel, uh, TT2KB. And they play every other Saturday, I think, uh, for yeah. this. Is that right? That's correct. Yeah. Okay. Um, and the the name of the scenario that they're in currently is Everstorm, uh, which these characters are part of that. Yeah, we got a couple different questions here, so uh, I'll yeah. get to uh, Z Bomb Gaming here in a second. Uh, Z Bomb's question was. Uh, if we remember what our very first D and D character is, so I'll let you think about that. Uh, but uh, Inks the Kitsune was saying uh, they find it interesting the female dragonborn have hair and the males don't. Do you know why this is? <laughs> I don't know. There's a lot of things about <laughs> the dragonborn art. Um, it seems a little strange when you think of a uh, you know reptilian race. There are certain decisions they made with the female members of that race. Uh, that would make you think they're mammals, and I, I don't know. Um, I, I have to assume it's just to be aesthetically pleasing, you know, to have hair and, you know, different features. Um, I, I don't know. Okay, last night, Sin, uh, oh, what's the horror guy's name? Simon Van Gelly or whatever his name is, um, had the, the gargoyle thing on. Oh, and yeah. the female gargoyles all had beaks. Mm. And then we go to the male gargoyle, which is the head gargoyle. Of course, he could speak, and he looks like the devil. Oh, naturally, you know, it's just, that's how that works. Um, let's see, first D&D character. I don't remember. Boy, it's been so long ago. I do remember certain characters that I had in certain games, um, like there was a D, there was a uh, um, Star Wars game that we played, and uh, my character was a Guido character, um, and I ended up betraying my whole squad, my whole, my whole group. <laughs> so it was it was all done subversely with uh with the dm and everybody was like what <laughs> why david david betrayed us how is this possible <laughs> uh inks the kitsune says uh the sculpts look amazing thank you um yeah plague state's having trouble with his phone reception yeah that's that's tough in a work environment to stream um i think my first character was a Probably just a thief or a wizard. I had two of those like early on, uh, back in ADD days. So I don't remember for sure. There wasn't a whole lot of character to the characters back then, so <laughs> it was just person who has uh, a class basically. I always was always fond of playing wizards. Still am. Um, Z-Bomb wants to know which version of Star Wars you were playing, whether it was Edge of the Empire, Age of Rebellion, or Force and Destiny Star Wars. Um, I think it was even further back than that. I think it was... Uh, this was in the 90s. I think this is when the Roll20 movement was going on. No? Or was it the D6s? D6s is what I remember. Yeah, whatever that one was. Like, way back in the day. I'd have to ask the... the I'd have to ask the GM. Hey, I did it right. I almost said DM, but it's GM. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, since we have some new people in the chat here, let me uh, show you some of his other pieces here. So I'm going to take away the main screen for a moment. Uh, here's one of his dragon heads. This is a uh, Draco Lich before he painted it. Let's see if that actually appears. Oh, right. I have the um, layering done here a little strangely today. Go ahead and do your thing. I'm trying to figure out why my stuff isn't going. Well, I'll show you if I can figure out how to get it to go. <laughs> uh, that should be showing, but it's not. Awesome. Maybe you got moved. Um, let's see if I can get the booth. There we go. Here's his uh, booth video. 
This will show you some stuff from, uh, I think this is when we were at C2E2. So a lot of his pieces are functional like that. So you have the door knockers, you have uh, boxes that you can open and close, these eggs open and close, little jewelry pieces, magnets, all kinds of stuff. A lot of these little cute guys. A little sleeping one that's up there in the top corner is what we gave away last week. And here's some of the necklaces he's got. Yeah, Z-Bomb Gaming, the D6 Star Wars is the, uh, the, the version of the game we were playing in. Okay. I don't know what the, the time of it was, like what, what the setting was. I assume it's probably just, you know, the same setting as the, uh, the movies. This here is the, the vent dragon he's well known for, and that's the end of the video. Let's see. Um, he also did this recently, so. Oh, thanks. Yeah, I also agree. His art is amazing. Uh, here's a spear he made recently. That was my dip into cosplay. I really dig working with that um, EVA foam stuff. Mm -hmm. So fun. There you go. And then, I don't know why this picture isn't going, but uh, let me fiddle with that for a second while you guys watch him work. See if, I, see if you need to relink it to... Uh, it was... Base, I mean, it was um, resources, live stream resources. Oh, you think maybe it moved? Yeah. Okay. Let's try that on for size. There it goes. Yep. Hey. So he does a lot of these too. These are. I'm pretty sure this one was one of the full sized heads, right? So yeah, like, that was a full size head. It went to like, it went to like, Stefan Porcani of Dwarven Forge. Cameras are inverted. Um, so yeah, that's like that long, probably front to back, and it's just massive. And the, it's glowing with uh, blue LED lights because I wanted it to glow like uh, you know the Game of Thrones uh, Draculich. When you looked into his eyes, it looked so spooky. Yeah, he's cool looking. And you felt so sorry for him. Uh, but, uh, anyway. Yeah, so there's another example there. So, hopefully, uh, hope you enjoy that. I really like doing that. I mean, it was because there's so much texture involved when you get to uh, these Draco liches. Uh, you know, you, you get to do the internal tearing, uh, you know, the muscle structure. I mean, it, it's just, oh, it's just fun. It's fun. Just, just like this uh, armor stuff is so cool to work with. Yeah, very nice. So, Inks the Kitsune, uh, what caught your eye that brought you in? like to know how people are finding us and what grabbed their attention. Also, if you'd like to know a little bit more about this character and uh, want to catch up on the actual episodes, uh, if you go to YouTube, you can find some videos. And we have a bunch of our Dungeons & Dragons streams up there. And that channel is Tabletop 2 Keyboard, spelled like this. That's what we failed to do, Jeff. We thought we were going to get all of our links up. Yeah, panels. Yeah. <laughs> Organize that, make it look nice. Uh, uh, there are some links down below, by the way, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. I think we still have the uh, handwritten in ones for his stuff. So if you want to go to his YouTube, uh, his. Uh, well, the, I changed it a little bit. I changed it so the links are down there too. All of the Patreon, the, all of that stuff has is, is got a link. But then. If you want to know about uh, my latest, uh, you know, originals that I'm going to roll out, um, 
or if you wanted to know about some kind of a discount that I was offering on my store, huh? And I'm always doing that. Uh, or if you wanted to know about um, any kind of special event that I will be at, I do all of that through my email list. And if you would be so kind, I would like to send you a newsletter too. I don't overdo it. I don't sell the, the emails. I don't, uh, nobody else will get a hold of the emails. It's only just me and I do it once a month. So if you want to take advantage of that, uh, there is a link down below that says sign up for my email a newsletter. And that's the one you want to be on. Yeah, so uh, Inks of Kitsune says they uh, saw you on a friend Discord and also they love dragons. So, yeah, oh. right place. Uh, which Discord was it? I bet it was Kiefer. Uh, maybe. But uh, it could also be that Poison Ivy just posted you on some random ones. So. Okay, yeah. Could it come from there too? That's true. Thank you very much, by the way. I so appreciate the, all of the the help that you guys have been giving me. Yeah, it goes a long way to get the views up initially, and that puts you up a little higher in the chart. Uh, as a lot of you could probably imagine, looking through the art section, there's like seventeen thousand channels going at all times. So, uh, if you're not at the top, you're buried down deep in there somewhere. Uh, there's also a link down below for a link. <laughs> a link for a link. Yes, yeah, a link good. for a link. Um, and that link is, uh, you know, if you're interested in um, uh, the kind of um, clay that I use or the tools that I'm using or anything like that, I have on my, my page, on my website, davidleepancake.com, there is a item menu item that's called links and that takes you to uh, the, the things I recommend on Amazon and if you follow that link and you buy then uh, Amazon is very kind and they give me a little bit of a of a uh, percentage of that and I do appreciate that very much that's how I'm able to take in some income, and which is really, really important at this moment. With the shows being gone, which was my major source of income, uh, it's been difficult. Yeah, sure has. But it's been interesting, you know, it's forced you to do some different things, given you a lot of opportunities to be working on new objects and products. And uh, Oh, like this. Cool. I mean, man, I mean, I wouldn't have had time before and now I have time so I'm very very thankful for that uh, Z-Bomb wants to know uh, how you're doing the scales the scales are done by just balling up a little bit of a clay at a time into a little ball and then pushing it down and then making little small adjustments with uh, the smallest of the knife tools just going in there and doing that number just making sure that they're separated but it's just a matter of doing that it's just over and over again yeah and he's he's also doing another thing uh that i didn't know about before but he's using um i don't know what you say it was like paint thinner or something oh yeah so what it does is it actually melts the clay a little bit uh, lighter fluid. Oh, lighter fluid, yeah. <laughs> and uh, it melts it slightly so it kind of fuses pieces together that are separate. Uh, makes it look a little more organic. And it evaporates so quick that uh, it doesn't, uh, doesn't linger around anyway. Now you can also use, but make sure that your lighter fluid and your torch are not being used at the same time <laughs> but I have this little torch too and you got to be very careful when you're going over things to, to smooth things with the torch because this clay melts very rapidly and I'm gonna hammer in the armor on the knee the shin I think I'm probably out of the... Yeah, there we go. go. Now we can see it. So 
add a little texture to those pieces. Yep. Mm. It may be a little challenging to notice from from this far out of a zoom, but there's a lot of little tiny detail on all those armor pieces. You see little like dents and little scrapes. Uh, you see it here alive. It's, it's just really cool looking. It's heavily pitted. Man, I think if this quarantine goes much longer, I'm gonna have like a full mullet. <laughs> and I'll often get to stare at the side of my head. It's like starting to curl around the bottom. Well, you know, Jeff, I could uh, take the. Uh... Yeah, no. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> we're just gonna we're just gonna stop that right now. Uh, I don't I don't really want to go through that process. But I imagine a lot of people are going through and watching those videos of how to cut your own hair. Maybe we could broadcast that. <laughs> oh <my> God. <laughs> For fifty thousand bits, I'll let him butcher my hair. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I'm not, I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting. That there's so much Star Star Wars uh, gaming going on. I really haven't done a ton of that. Yeah, I'm surprised you guys haven't done that. Uh, you know, it's just a... I don't know, something about that particular genre is so... Um, defined, I guess, that it feels difficult to play in. Well, what we did was we took... We, we played, like, we weren't the main... We, we were kind of a... An offshoot, and nobody was allowed to be a Jedi. Yeah, see, I think that's the trick. Yeah. So I feel like you really can't mix the two particularly well. Well, Je like, Jedi play by themselves. <laughs> yeah, and it seems like, you know, a Jedi, it's... The whole thing was there were, like, two or, you know, like a handful of them, right? There's, like, four, you know, in, in the galaxy. But if you watch the movie, it feels like everybody's a Jedi, you know? Or a Force user, at least. So it created a very different feel, but like, uh, like the Mandalorian though gives a good example of how it could be done. Or yeah, um, I guess the uh, the other example would be um, God, what's that movie called? The uh, one that felt like a war movie. Oh, that was Rogue One. Rogue One. There we go. Those two, I think, would be a good examples of how the game could be played with uh, without having all the overt being stuck in a story of Luke Skywalker, you know. I don't know. We just never really did. We played it like once, I think, and then just didn't stick with it. I just realized you chopped off the the little loop that was going out from this feet. I mean, obviously you did that, but you had that like... Oh yeah, I did, know, yes, yeah. Horseshoe sheet that was connecting him. It was uh, getting in the way, so... And he was stable enough at that point that I could do that. Oops. Oh, Z-Bomb was playing Mandalorian. Cool. Yeah, I'm sure they become pretty popular these days. I gotta say, it was a really well done show. Yeah, I enjoyed it. But, like you said, that was like a western in space. Yeah, I mean, yeah, Star Wars is essentially a space western anyway. I've, uh, I mean, I, you know, I've been very fond of westerns. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much every day, you walk in, you see them listening, and watching some old black and white western. 
well, very, um, I don't know, they had, they had their appeal. I like older movies. Is it just a nostalgia thing, or is there a style that you like about it? Uh, some of the older movies were not as in love with themselves as some of the newer ones, and not so intense. Uh, had a little bit less intensity. Huh. Yeah, okay. I, I, I know that sounds a little... I don't know. That, that may not be exactly what I mean, but... Movies to sleep to. <laughs> <laughs> I like them because I can just fall asleep and it doesn't matter. <laughs> well, you know, like some of the modern movies, they get you hyped so much with... Oh, they know how to pluck the, the strings of your heart so much, you know. Um, doesn't matter what you're watching, you know, if it's a war movie or it's a sci-fi that or a, a romance or whatever it is. It, they know how to do it. They know, like pull on those heart strings, get you enraged, mad, uh, want to fight, um, uh, or, you know... Uh, just sad and everything and, and you just go through that roller coaster of feelings and it's so intense that sometimes I just prefer the older movies that just like yeah that's okay <laughs> that's interesting. Uh, I prefer the movies that don't do anything <laughs> I like the actors that can't emote <laughs> well there's there's another reason too there's when you when you watch some of the older movies it's like being an archaeologist um, yeah, uh, or a paleontologist, um, uh, but an archaeologist mostly, uh, because you get to see how what one culture, what one time period, those people thought about certain things. Like it's whether it's uh, uh, the role of women, or uh, that's what comes to my mind right now the top foremost but there's always race other things you get to see what's going on at that time period and you think wow there is a difference between now and then oh yeah thankfully it's a big difference yes there is a big difference uh z-bomb gaming yeah we we played a lot of vampires masquerade uh and requiem uh dustin and i actually used to run a live action version of the game at uh at our college and did that for God, I don't know how long that was. Probably 10 years. <laughs> yeah, they played LARP quite a bit. They had a LARP going. Yeah, I started going to that junior year of high school and then played that probably... I, honestly, I don't remember. It's been a long time. Had some breaks in there, but yeah. Yeah, we did a ton of it. That, Werewolf, Mage, some Wraith. Uh, the old World of Darkness stuff in there. I used to run an Exalted game. So yeah, if, you, uh, if you're into White Wolf stuff, we did a lot of it. I'm going to thin this up a little bit. I think it's a little too thick, so I'm making myself a thinner version of the clay. Are you actually able to change the thickness or yeah. is it just running it through twice no it's it changed there's a little knob on the side for the spaghetti pasta squeezer and you can make it thinner hmm. picked up some dirt yeah there's a lot in there in there yeah. okay i think that's thinner what did i do with my pattern I should probably make these patterns out of something dark so that I don't lose them. <laughs> uh, you have a knack for losing things. Is that like a superpower? It is a superpower. You know, some people get cool superpowers. Uh, here in our family, we get some really weird ones. Uh, he loses stuff. I, uh, I'm invisible to wait staff. That's a good one. <laughs> um, I also have the superpower of if somebody does something embarrassing and nobody sees it, and then they look around to see if anyone notices, for some reason we make eye contact immediately from any distance. <laughs> like, 
Like, it is uncanny. Like, it could be like somebody who slips and falls, like, 300 yards away, and there's like a little gap in a fence somewhere that there's no reason anyone should see each other through this fence. I'll happen to have just been looking at that fence, and they'll dead eyes stare at deep into my soul, knowing how embarrassed they are. And we're both just like, let's just pretend we didn't notice that. I don't know how it happens, but it always happens. I've also discovered I'm kind of like a Disney princess, you know, like animals. Like, if I go to a zoo or something and like the animals aren't like doing anything, they're just like hiding somewhere, the second I get near, they'll just like show up at the window. My kids will be up there like looking at the window and stuff, no animals at all. They walk away, I walk up there instantly. Like birds and stuff come land near me. Squirrels run up to me. It's like, well, that's kind of a cool superpower. If yeah, that one's me. actually pretty good. Uh, Z Bomb, you're really wanting to play Cthulhu. Yeah. Um, oh, my friend Jacob did a. Uh, he worked for. Well, he did a, some of the night work for a Cthulhu game. Mm -hmm. I can't think of which one it was now. Oh, my goodness. Jacob's going to kill me. Yeah, the, the new books are pretty good. I, I took a look at them for a little bit. It's a very different feeling of gaming in that, you know, obviously the players are not heroes or just people. Uh, obviously, you're not going to win. <laughs> Stuff's going to go wrong. The setting's very dark and foreboding. Boy, if you want a modern day uh, take on some of the Cthulhu things, um, uh, Peter Klein's uh, is it Room 14 or four, yes, Room 14 yes, that's a really good book you gotta try it out, I mean I, I love that book hmm. fun what's well, it about? Um, this guy moves into this apartment and he begins to notice that uh, there's something odd about a, a, an apartment door next to him. That's room 14. And it ends up being, well, I won't tell you what it ends up being. But you probably can guess. Um, and in the end, it's uh, one of the, some of the elder gods appear and... I, I'm really messing it up. I'm, I'm not gonna spoil. I've already spoiled it. Oh my goodness. Me and and re revealing a synopsis of a book. Oh yes. You don't want me. It's just really fun. Yeah, glad to hear you guys are having fun with those games. What time were they supposed to have streamed those games? Probably they stream on Sunday. weekends where people have other plans. I assume you guys are playing online. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much the only way to play these days, but you know, getting more comfortable with it as we do more and more of it. Still prefer the in-person games, of course, but, you know, once you get used to trying to run a game with uh, Roll20 and putting it in maps and all that stuff, it's not too bad. We'll say having some of the integration into the sheets right there, where as a DM you can just click the button and it does all the rolls for you is pretty nice. That and having the compendiums built in is good. So you can like, look stuff up really quickly.
Uh, you say his character is really cool. Um, what's his character? Celestial Tifling. Yeah, that's actually what uh, Fulcrum is in uh, our game. It's kind of a hybrid between the two. Uh, also a warlock. Yeah, that's, that's also what he is. I, I think you... <laughs> that's uh, exactly what his character is. Interesting. So that'll be one of the characters we actually sculpt. I have a Cthulhu door knocker that I've done. Yeah, you do have the Cthulhu door knocker. Is there one in here? Uh, there's one up on the wall over there, but we can't. Well, we have no way of showing them. Oh, that's mounted. Yeah. Uh... We will show you next. The what I'm doing. I'm streaming Tuesday. Well, wait. That. Kathy will be, my mom will be helping me, so. Let's see. Random things laying around in here. We got like tentacles in the back corner over here. We yeah, do. Part of us. Part of one of them. Looks like it may have uh, busted off or something. Oh, it's this guy. Oh, that's a. Um, that was an experiment. It was to be a cane topper, oh, but I never could work it out to see how to cast it. Yeah, I can see that being problematic. So there's like like a like a lots of little. Oh, let me see if I can get it in here. There's like lots of little undercuts and circles and just enough to drive you mad. Like an elder god. <laughs> All kinds of just random stuff you have back here. I will be doing uh, the box, the Cthulhu box, with a octopus on top of the box. <laughs> And the octopus will be in chains, and this box is going to be pretty one of my biggest I think I've ever done. It's going to be about this big, hold lots of dice. Um, it'll be a resin cast, and uh, hand painted with glass eyes, all kinds of stuff. That's going to be a, a Kickstarter that I'm going to run. So because of this time period uh, with the pandemic and everything and those shows, uh, getting access to the materials that I need uh, has been particularly challenging. So I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to run a Kickstarter to fund some of my, my cast so that I can buy some resin and buy some silicone to get the cast done and materials. And I'll be doing that one right after I finish up this owl that I'm working on on Thursday nights. The owl you can see here. This guy right here. Yeah, that one's coming together pretty quick. Yeah, I have a feeling it'll go pretty fast. It's not quite as detailed as, as like this Kodo, Kodo character that I'm working on right now. It might end up detailed though well it'll be detailed but it's just not quite as quite as intense as kodo is mm -hmm. 
I mean, did, the thing is, Jeff, I mean, with, with uh, something like this, I mean, uh, this is no light commission here. This is a pretty big undertaking. Oh, of course it is, yeah. Just because of the detail of the armor and the uh, amount of time that has to be spent to put it together. Mm -hmm. As the bomb is saying, Stargate, I love my girlfriend's friends. I have so much more in common with them than I do my own friends. <laughs> uh, well... Yeah, gotta bring your friends into the fold. Yeah. Get them going. What's his handle? Is is, is it Stargate? No, it's Z Bomb Gaming. I was I was talking about how uh, my Tempest cleric that I'm playing in another off-stream game is uh, modeled off of Teal'c and Gaston. Oh, kind of okay. Mixed together. Oh, he's, I see. Yeah. He's really arrogant and talks about himself all the time. Does his like morning affirmation songs and stuff. Prayers. <laughs> but he was he was referencing his his character who had a like look wise kind of looked like Hellboy mixed with Gaston. Oh yeah. Hellboy, one of my favorites. That was a visually beautiful movie, for sure. Yeah. The new one wasn't bad, but I still prefer the first first guy, Ron Perlman. And the storyline. I'm not sure exactly what, what was missing out of this last interpretation. I don't even remember there was one. Oh yeah, there's a new one. New guy. I can't remember the actor. Oh, it was the guy who was from Stranger Things, the sheriff. Oh, yeah, yeah. Hey, Jay Bruce, welcome to the chat. Good stopping in. We had fun playing uh, Shadowrun the other day. That was cool. Oh, I did. Yeah, I saw you on uh, on the Shadowrun thing. That was kind of cool that you had the author, one of the authors of the book. Um, of Shadowrun. I mean, I remember playing way back, but I haven't played anything recently. Mm -hmm. But I, uh, it was just kind of cool that they, one of the authors was your GM. Yeah, Scott Schlitz came on, took care of us, gave us a little uh, walk through the, the game since most of us at our, our side of the table have never played. It's really cool. I accidentally made a truly ridiculously powerful character. <laughs> And we had a good time of it. Had uh, did, did Jay Bruce? He had, he had he played before. Um, oh yeah, Shadowrun. He runs uh, a game. He actually streams it. Oh okay. Yeah, he's he's played a lot of Shadowrun. The last time I played was way back, and all I remember is that the Decker took an enormous amount of time away from all the rest of the people. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know if there's a real good way of fixing that problem. It was like, oh, well, I don't know what we're going to do now. We'll just sit around and wait for this to end. <laughs> Though I will say, uh, it was an interesting approach for the game this this week. Is, uh, there was hacking, and then there was also magic stuff, so that we had a, a character in the astral world. So, theoretically, we had people in three different scenes but it felt well integrated. It didn't feel like we were just waiting around for each other. Well, that was, I mean, you know, you would think that the guy who wrote it could probably pull that off, so. <laughs> <laughs> you would hope, anyway. Yeah, it was a good time. And we overcomplicated something really simple. <laughs> turned, about, turned out that the mission was exactly what, we, what it was uh, labeled as. But uh, it's always good to be paranoid. Extra layer of complication because the uh, the mission was to steal people from a group that I owed debt to. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I was like, uh, 
Hey guys, we're gonna steal from you. Uh, just, you know, give me a heads up. If you wanna pay us, we'll, uh, I'll make sure that doesn't happen. Um, nah. <laughs> oh, okay. I guess we'll just rob you then. <laughs> <laughs> um, cool. Yeah, shots were fired, that's for sure. <laughs> A few of them. Yeah, everything was going fine until they decided to show up early to the double cross and shot us instead of the other guys. <laughs> I basically told him like, hey, we're, we're gonna be doing this exchange here, so uh, after we get paid, why don't you come on? So I told him like, come a half hour after, and then they showed up like 40 minutes early and uh, proceeded to shoot us down. <laughs> oh, great. Like, oh, crap. And then Jay Bruce did, uh, definitely, he, his character was an orc that was uh, the face of our group, and yeah, you got to ride down a zip line and punch an air spirit in the face. That was pretty epic. So, you know, he did the work of the face by punching them in the face, and it, it played out. The, did, was anybody else, uh, did anybody else, well, I know you probably watched it, uh, the Will Smith thing that was on Netflix. Talking about Bright? Yeah, Bright. Did, did you guys like that? Yeah, I did. I, it's funny, because when I watched it, I thought it was a series. And I, I did like, too, yeah. So I'm like watching it, and I'm like, okay, this is going interesting places. I can see where they're setting things up, and I'm like, wait, what, they're resolving this? Wait, is this happening? Like, what in the world? And then, uh, then I realized it was a movie. <laughs> I was kind of disappointed that it was a movie and not a series, because that would have been a great, great movie. I mean, great series. Yeah, they, a lot of fun. Yeah, Jay Bruce says he loved that movie. Yeah, it was it was good. It, it did a good job of kind of putting it together. Had a cool feel to it. Once I realized it was a movie, the pacing made a lot more sense. <laughs> yeah. Definitely had a shadow run feel. Mm-hmm. Without a doubt. Let's see, so how's it coming along there? Got some armor going on. Nice. So we're doing the right leg. Oh, I see. So you're going to go back through and add a, a second layer on top of that. Yeah, so see, this uh, this layer has to come on next. Yeah, I was like, they don't look the same. No, they're not. <laughs> and plus, he doesn't have his knee guard on yet, and then there's several other things that has to happen here. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, it's coming. Poison Ivy says the scales are looking so amazing. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, Dustin played a pretty funny character in that too. He was playing a, uh, a first time runner and he was a super obese uh, elf that was riding in a hover around. <laughs> <laughs> he was a magician, so he, like, he was a trust fund kid that was just used to using magic to do everything. And uh, yeah, he's ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> so he shows up and he's just like, so uh, you know, do we, um, what are we doing here? Do we just, I just buy all this stuff and you like bring out like random equipment and it's like doing everything you should never do <laughs> he did have the tech <laughs> he had a few things yeah but yeah he was actually doing pretty well on the run pretty impressed of course it helps when your GM can't roll anything that was that uh, was a plus Apparently Scott is cursed um, 
he cannot roll to save his life. And uh, so, you know, things that should have obviously gone against us uh, definitely went in our favor that shouldn't have. <laughs> So, do you think you're going to play Shadow Run again? Um, maybe. I think uh, Cam is very interested in it. Um, he's talked a lot in the past about wanting to, you know, if he ever ran something, he would want to run something like Shadow Run. So, maybe that would be cool. Hmm. I didn't know Cam was. I didn't know he DM. He doesn't. <laughs> oh. So. This would be like really is uh, like second time ever trying it. We're actually, you know, hoping that a lot of the guys will try it out. You know, give everybody a, a shot to uh, try to run a game. It doesn't have to be like a 13-year campaign or anything. You know, it could just be a, a session or two. So, the this where you played Shadowrun at uh, was your what, what you're calling is your spotlight. Mm -hmm. uh, to like play new games and new different things. What's the next one up? Oh, who knows? Um, they're, they're random. So like, uh, if we get a creator or something that wants to run a game for us, we'll we'll throw it together. Like uh, we talked to Travis Leg, who is from um, uh, Onyx Path, and he does the Scarred Land stuff. Hmm. And so we we're talking about possibly doing that. Now, before you had some kind of a Western game that you played. Yeah, it was the Ballad of the Pistol Arrow. Yes, that one. That, that kind of appealed to me, too. Mm -hmm. That had a lot of potential. Yeah, so, it was pretty good. Especially since I like Westerns, anyway. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it, was, it wasn't too bad. Definitely got me in the, in the mood to play some Red Dead Redemption, which is what I started playing after that. got a good community around a lot of people in it a lot of different uh you know artists and creators and all that stuff yeah you've had some pretty spectacular guests i'm hoping that i'll i can get some of my artist friends to come on and we can do a little bit of an interview thing show yeah. them their show you guys their work um like my buddy stan morrison oh my goodness good grief He's so insanely good. Yeah, he's got some really good stuff there. And I have a few others that I want to try to get on, like my buddy Paul, um, Paul Vincenti. He does really spectacular oil painting work. So I, I got a, quite a few that I want to introduce you to. Yeah, it'll be good. You know, get a couple people on and do something on this on your channel here with. Uh, other artists and get some collaboration going. So we've been talking about actually bringing on artists, having them show their art, talking, you know, both of you guys talking about the art process, you know, what they're doing, what's interesting about it, uh, what the challenges were, that kind of stuff. Yeah, and that way, uh, it's not so much about the art business, but it's about um, about the artists themselves and the, and the art that they produce. That's what's going to be the focus of it. You know, we got some chat about uh, Cyberpunk 2077. It's a game that's supposed to be coming out soon. Yeah, that, that it's been in production for a while, hasn't it? <laughs> Hopefully it comes out. It's got a lot of hype around it. There was uh, an old uh, TV series. Well, I don't know how old it is, but uh, I, it showed up a couple, uh, maybe ten years ago or something like that. That had s a similar theme to it. Hmm. Yeah, there's been a lot of Shadowrun games. I don't know if there's a, a ton of these Cyberpunk specifically ones, but yeah, definitely spent some time watching some movies uh, ahead of time, get in the mood. Uh, if you want to really get in the mood, uh, take a. Neil Stephenson's uh, Snow Crash. Oh, fantastic. Fantastic book. Hmm. I mean, really, really good. Yeah, I watched some 
what was it? I watched Minority Report. Hadn't seen that. But, you know, like, Philip K. Dick stuff is always going to be a good feel for uh, weird and uncomfortable movies. Um, you know, Giant Mnemonic, obviously. Not a great movie, but uh, definitely fits the genre. Yeah, it does. Minority Report did, did remarkably well, although I don't like Tom Cruise. Yeah, it was a pretty good movie. I was actually pretty happy with it. Um, let's see, I'm trying to think of other good examples that would fit the, the genre. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of customization in that game, I have a feeling. Seems to be a big emphasis. So looking at these things, how are they held on? Are they going to be like a, attached to a belt? Yeah, there's a belt that goes around the back of it. Gotcha. I haven't put that on yet, but I, I have on the other guy. So yeah, like there's a belt there, a belt there, a belt there. Yeah, I was talking about these uh, chevron shaped ones. You know, like the ones you're putting on now. Oh, th these are probably done with rivets inside there. I would think. I mean, if you were doing it, if you were doing it for real, um, mm -hmm. little rivets. But I don't see. Uh, let me let take a closer look at Levi's work here. We could add rivets. He's got rivets in the uh, mall. That I mean, if you look at the mall, there's like little rivets all over there. Oh yeah. That might be interesting to do, except I think that you want to have this as freeform as it possibly can be, so the rivets would probably be up towards the top. Or strapped on with a belt, I don't know. Yeah, it kind of looks like that. The big buckle in the front is a belt buckle. For these? With the, uh, the belt wrapped around there. Do you see how it's got that kind of golden jagged fringe part? Yeah. I think that's a belt. It's like strapped onto the front. Yeah, I do think it is a belt. And it definitely probably holds on part of that armor and the chest and stomach. Actually, dating somebody who wears armor and fights with swords and stuff. It, I, now I look at the armor differently. I'm like, oh yeah, this has to hang this way. This is where this has to go. This is how this moves. <laughs> you know, like before, it's just like that looks cool. <laughs> I was really, uh, yeah. I was when we were at C2E2. I got to meet her, and, it, and uh, I see her in armor anyway. I met her before, but um, that was pretty interesting. Hey, you should see him fighting. Hey, Air Laser. Welcome to the chat. Hi, Air Laser. Apparently on a cell phone as well, so data is dying, but I uh, wanted to say hi. Hey. Appreciate it. We did a uh, time lapse earlier of uh, a lot of the progress that's been made. Kind of talked over the top of it, so for those of you who may have missed that earlier, we have that video. And we'll probably do, do that again, um, but not before Tuesday. Uh, I'll probably be working on other things, but certainly before next Saturday, I'll be doing some more work on this guy and do another time lapse of that work and then just talk about it when we get to here. Well, Air Laser, uh, your question of how long we're running, uh, we were scheduled to be done in about 20 minutes. So, uh, not too much longer. Damn, that went by faster than I thought. Probably longer for you guys, but <laughs> it definitely went by faster than I thought. I thought I would be done with the armor before, of the leg before now. 
Yeah, Air Laser, if you're driving right now, you probably shouldn't be texting us. <laughs> ah, yeah, let's not do that. Just putting that out there. Get home safe, and then, you know, watch the replay or something. But... Which, what? speaking of which, if you want to catch up on the past episodes, I think you're putting them up on your YouTube, right? I am, yes. Yeah, uh, I have a YouTube channel, and it's uh, David Lee Pancake Art. And you can go there and take a look. There's a link down below uh, to my YouTube, so don't miss out on that. That needs to be a little higher. Yeah, there's actually a bunch of different stuff on there, so not just the replays of this, there's also uh, some making of other pieces. Oh, by the way, I released today uh, the making of Aria Spear. Uh, that's on there. Mm -hmm. So you can go there and take a look now. It's all live. Well, live recorded, whatever. But uh, it's definitely there. And I have uh, a pattern that you can download of Aria Spear on my web store for free. I, I hope some of you are like like to do cosplay. I do. Yeah. Uh, Z Bomb Gaming wants to know how are you planning to do the chest armor and pauldrons? Pauldrons being the uh, shoulder pad guys. Uh, much the same way I'm doing these these um, leggings things here. If you can look, see there's like these all these pieces in here, and then all of this was done. So it's overlapping. So I'm going to do this part here. I, I've got a pattern cut out. Let's see which one is it. Not those. I'll have to build this up a little bit, but the pattern goes on there like like that somewhat. Clay is flexible, so it's not going to be like paper. But um, and then this this is the bottom piece right here. So this part here needs to be built out a little bit to support uh, these clay pieces that I'm going to put on. That's the marvelous thing about clay is it's additive, not subtractive, yeah, for the poison, most part. Poison Ivy uh, had a question of, are you going to make his stomach bigger to fit, or are you just going to put the armor on there? Um, yeah, it sounds like he's going to be building up a, a big, old, big old gut to hold it on there. Now, whether Kodo actually has a big old gut or not, we don't know, but it looks like it. No, and that's what it, that's what I interpreted, too, is that a lot of this was armor. But he probably has somewhat of a gut. I mean, it's just that the armor makes it exaggerated way out there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember uh, when Clint was talking about his character, he originally described it as strongman body not cut not like sleek so bulky you know like one of those guys that throw poles yeah the strongman competition and whoever what's i don't like sports <laughs> okay i whatever you out there that disagree with me that's fine i just don't like things like football and basketball and all that stuff, but I will watch a strongman competition. I don't know why, but it, that part is like, okay, that's kind of entertaining. Yeah, they're pretty crazy looking. Kyber tosses and yeah, anybody, deadlifting like trucks. Yeah, you know, that, that's kind of interesting. Definitely seems superhuman. But, you know, none of those guys have those, like, bodybuilder uh, physiques, you know. They, they always look like trucks themselves. <laughs> Functional mass. <laughs> you know, when you're looking at the, the range of, of humanity, it's just astounding sometimes you can look and you can see like all of these different shapes and different people and different attitudes and 
I don't know. I get, I get. Uh, I think that's pretty fascinating. Mm -hmm. Oh, show. I'll say the uh, the addition of those routers definitely helped the stream. It's held consistently. I haven't dropped any frames this entire time today. Oh, that's great. Uh, Poison Ivy wants to know about the characters. Yeah, so uh, Kodo is the character we're making now. Uh, he Clint basically described him as Judge Dredd, essentially, as a paladin. Uh, I don't really know a ton about Judge Dredd, honestly. I know the, the idea, though. So he's a vengeance paladin uh, that his people had uh, been basically super self-isolated and were their own kind of like community and had just opened up their borders to start trading when they got attacked by the the big bad evil pirate guy that we were dealing with and uh, so his first encounter with any other species basically was they're all pirates <laughs> and uh, they sank his boat and stole all of his stuff so he vowed vengeance and hunted him down and so he's a uh, He's kind of a mix of stern, grumpy old man, and then lovable, funny drunk. So he's kind of like got that like kind of duality a little bit to him. Uh, and then we've got Fulcrum, who I was describing earlier. Uh, that's Tim's character, and his character is uh, kind of tied to our last campaign. The last big bad evil guy was this. Uh, Technically, he was a lich, but he was all about transformations, and he created uh, lots of amalgamations of creatures. And one of those creatures he created was Fulcrum. And so he took two things that shouldn't go together and put them together. So he mixed an ASMR and a Typhling, and that's ended up being his character. Uh, so he's basically kind of like a Tim Burton kid, you know, like naive and sheltered with a weird background and he is now loose and trying to find a place in the world and has like lots of these weird magical abilities imbued to him because of his uh, upbringing and creation. So he's a, uh, a hex blade warlock and um, he's an interesting character. And then we've got... Tar. What's that? I just didn't realize I put the, the, the front part on before I could should have been putting on the the side part. K oh. Keep going, bud. Oh, okay. Uh, then there's Morgane. That's Cameron's character. Uh, Morgane is the not bard. So he's he's a musician. Uh, he follows and worships the god of metal and forging and uh, badassery, essentially, in the campaign. And his character is a arcane archer. Um, He's, a, he's an elf, and uh, I always forget he's an elf, actually. But he's an elf, and he's uh, basically he's he's discovering a magical song that has supernatural abilities uh, that he basically got offered uh, to him by a guy who was dying. So like he just randomly met this stranger on a pier, and the guy like leaned to him, was like, "You've got to know this stuff," and handed him this note, and he was like, "I don't know what just happened. This guy just collapsed in front of me." And since then, he's been uh, hounded by, essentially, the, you know, the devil who's been chasing him around and uh, trying to steal the song back from him. And uh, we haven't really figured out a ton about that stuff yet, but it did just come up in the game recently. Uh, let's see, what else do we have? Um, the character might forget. Oh, uh, then we have Balrin, who is another elf. He is a sea elf. Uh, he is a druid of the coast. And his whole shtick is uh, he doesn't believe that the uh, modern gods are worthy of veneration. It's the, the old gods of nature that need to be venerated. And he's a pirate, uh, but his piracy is different. So his is all about uh, giving basically like the respect towards the sea and 
finding boats and stuff that aren't respectful of the, the sea and converting them or uh, sending them to the bottom, essentially. So Kodo is okay with his piracy? No. No. No, he's not. Oh. <laughs> it was a big problem. Uh, still kind of a big problem. But uh, there's been hmm. some working towards solving that. You have to calm yourself, Mr. Kodo. Yeah. Uh, and then the last character is my character, is Skeezer. Uh, he is a gnome wizard illusionist. And his whole shtick is kind of like Westworld. So... He and a bunch of others were created in the image of uh, this wizard. And he's basically like a construct, essentially, um, that thinks it's a person. And he comes to with like a bunch of memories of who he's supposed to be and what his like, you know, goals are and what he's been up to. But in actuality, he's only been around for like a couple days. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, as he kind of goes around in adventures, um, he believes that he's a, uh, an old, like, retired teacher trying to help, uh, students during the war, you know, to le learn their history and stuff while their parents are off fighting. Um, but in actuality, he's just a, a strange thing. And he comes across other versions of himself, uh, that look very similar, almost identical, but there are different character classes and have different backstories. And uh, he comes across one that's a cleric named Gibbon. Uh, he comes across one that's like a ranger uh, named Does. He comes across one that's uh, like a dumb, like barbarian fighter guy. Um, and uh, oh, there's a lot of chat randomly going on there. Yep. Uh, so that's um, Tonko, and then uh, we've come across a few more. Uh, so there's like uh, Steve Just Steve, and then there's uh, Plixatrix, Ploxitox, and Plexitex. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, there's a bunch of weird ones. Um, and so we're kind of coming into it and starting to discover that there's this whole mad wizard that has a machine that's being able to turn illusions into real things with sentience. Um, apparently, like, the first generation of them, though, only lived, like, for a few days at a time, and then they die and then are reincarnated. And they keep experiencing this over and over and over, knowing that they have, like, a few days, and then they, like, dissolve into nothingness. Uh, so they're hunting my character down to try to find uh, the secrets to becoming full creatures, I guess, instead of having this awful mayfly existence. So, that was the recent episodes we've been kind of stumbling into that. Of course, everything went really badly this last time, so we'll see how that goes. Well, I like the backstory. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Air Laser's right. Uh, Balrin, yeah, Poison Ivy and Air Laser, obviously, have watched quite a bit, but Balrin is usually the guy who drives her boat, and every single time he rolls to pilot the boat, he botches or fails it miserably and crashes the boat somehow. So we have crashed this boat, like, hundreds of times now. <laughs> uh, and that's why the top half of Fulcrum drives a boat, which is funny because at one point, Fulcrum's character got cut in half and resurrected, so that's a, kind of a joke about that. Um, let's see. Air Laser says the scales are looking so good. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think it is looking pretty good, too. Scales or armor? Yeah, he's working the armor right now, but uh, she specifically said scales. Well, the armor looks like scales, too, so. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, it's, it's been a pretty fun campaign, though. Uh, so the Everstorm is the name of that campaign. And our DM, Levi, is the one that homebrews all of this stuff, makes all these crazy stories up. And we run that every other Saturday night on Tabletop to Keyboard, which is TT2KB. I really like the fact that your character is, is a construct, uh, um, a created cre creature. Yeah, it's, it's interesting because at the beginning of the game, he, he knew that he was something that wasn't real, but he didn't know what he was. He thought he was like a temporary illusion or something. It just stuck around. 
I, I, I dig, uh, I like, I like games that create philosophical, um, questions, mm -hmm. or explore philosophical questions. I find that fascinating. Boy, my clay is really getting solid here. Well, we've only got about four minutes left, and it looks like, uh, guys out in the backyard deciding to use the industrial mower, so I'm sure that sounds great. <laughs> oh, he must have been the one that rang the doorbell. Could so, have been, yep. yeah. So if you heard the doorbell ring, <laughs> and now the mower's going. Uh, Air Laser says also the armor looks great, obviously. Um, Air Laser says uh, she can't wait for a plushie of Skeezer. I hope for the sculpt we get multiple outfits somehow. Whoo! <laughs> and Dad sells copies, we can customize our outfits. Boy. <laughs> Um, yeah. Okay, tall order, but yeah, maybe we can do that. Yeah, apparently both Air Laser and Poison Ivy Pika have found online services where you can send a design and they make a plushie out of it. Oh, wow, cool. So they're making my character out of it. Uh, my character looks like uh, big, huge eyes, really spindly, tiny body, uh, and he's got porcupine quills for hair. Don't you have a copy of, that you can pull up that... Uh, not loaded in here, but maybe I can bring something up. It'll probably not look great, but we'll see what I can do. See if I can find one. The quills are, are what I'm struggling in my mind with uh -huh. as to how I'm going to make it so that it'll be castable. I don't know where you... If you've got a picture here, I don't know where it's at. And it would be on the desktop uh, under sculpting projects. But that's what you guys are looking at there. It yeah, is, uh, that is character. Skeezer. <laughs> I didn't even tell it to load it up, but there he is. Um, as you can see, those are the kind of the quills, kind of the, the features of the character. But uh, let me go ahead and get that out of there. It's not where he belongs. <laughs> Well, guys, the things that would have to happen now, um, I'll get another covering for his uh, right butt cheek back here. I'll put some straps on f to hold the armor on. And uh, then we'll be working on the front. There's this guard here that comes down that we'll put on next. Yes, next. And then we'll be working on this belly region and building that up and then the belt that goes around. So by the time I get that all on, I mean, look how thick his legs are now. Oh, I need to do the knee pad here too, the knee guard and the, the diamond things and the little spur uh, heel guard back here, which I'll need to strengthen to in order to cast. But uh, he's coming along. Yeah, he looks awesome. Uh, Air Laser, yeah, if you, you were thinking that basically you could uh, make the outfits generic enough, you could change some of the colors maybe to equal different versions. Yeah. Uh, the different versions have a lot of different customization on them. Um, Poison Ivy, yeah, if you're saying you'd want to be uh, cosplayed as Skeezer, yeah, go for it. Send me pictures. That'd be cool. So uh, I guess we're getting close. I oh, better yeah, do my wrap up. We're right. at the wrap up time now, actually. Okay. Let's do a close so, up and kind of rotation. Um, yeah, let's get let's get him a little bit closer here. Let's see, man, look at that. There's a lot of detail on there. Oops, going the wrong way. Yeah, it's it's hard to deal with that. It's like mirrored, but mirrored again. <laughs> nice. Good. Ah. <laughs> Very nice. 
All right, so here's the rundown. We will have a Tuesday night session at seven. Yeah, seven. Seven o'clock here on Twitch. And we'll come back and we'll do some more armor and probably the, the front part uh, and uh, some of the straps and stuff like that will go on. That is Tuesday night, seven o'clock, this station and we'll see you then. But uh, in the meantime, if you want to be part of that newsletter, uh, go out, subscribe to my, my email list. Um, I do have my Patreon that I will be updating tomorrow sometime with a Dragon of the Month Club uh, option. So if you haven't done that uh, and you'd want to, to be part of the Dragon of the Month Club, uh, what I'm going to be doing is doing a little bitty dragons uh, each month uh, you sign up, I, it'll be a, a $25 fee, and then each month I will send you a little dragon that you will get in the mail. Um, uh, Poison Ivy and uh, Early Laser say thank you for the, the stream. You're very welcome. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, Z Bomb Gaming says they're excited to see more. I'll come back for sure. Thank, thank you. you. And uh, yeah, so we appreciate you all for coming and hanging out with us. Um, looks like uh, you don't have a whole lot of channels attached to your channel right now, so I don't have a person to raid. Uh, so we're just going to probably roll on out of here. But uh, I want to thank you all for stopping in, and uh, we'll see you next time. Ah, thanks. Bye-bye. Adios.